The Canadian farmers have arrived to tell Justin Trudeau that enough is enough with the carbon tax. Freedom Convoy 2.0 has begun, and we're going to discuss it right now. Let's get into it. Oh, yeah! What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to The Fringe. The Freedom Convoy was something unprecedented. It was something that I never thought we would see the likes of again, and probably never will on the magnitude or scale that we saw the truckers, I guess, scale in on Ottawa to protest against mandates, to protest against the unfair treatment of our governments. While other protests have been rambling up over the years of trying to, trying to, I guess, have an impact to the level that we saw of the Freedom Convoy, hopefully not without Justin Trudeau's overextension of police force, well, another one has emerged and one that we've kind of been talking about on this channel in small amounts, but one that I feel is now starting to erupt and is only going to get larger and it's going to be interesting to see where things go. Now, we're going to get into all of that, but before we do, ladies and gentlemen, I want to remind you that we're close to hitting 30,000 subscribers here on the channel. It would be great if you're enjoying this content. If you want to hit that subscribe button, click the bell for notifications. Also, make sure to leave a thumbs up and a comment down below because Justin Trudeau, as of late, has been... <laughs> It's hammering down on these videos. The shadow banning has been out of this world. They do not want you seeing these videos, especially when we talk about Justin Trudeau. We talk about politics going on in the country. Mass suppression is going on all across YouTube right now. So make sure, again, if you're enjoying it, leave a thumbs up and a comment. It helps the channel and it helps push it out there despite the shadow bans for people to be aware that, hey, people are watching this and they're enjoying it, but let's get to it. The pleb, a good friend of the channel, was out in Montreal earlier today, and he was live streaming the trucker protest that is now built up, that is now in mass swing on its way, hopefully to spread across the country, and I would hope come to Ottawa eventually. Now, I don't know about any plans to move to Ottawa. I don't know if they're staying in Montreal, but man, what a turnout it was today. And I want to show a little bit of clips, but before I jump into that, I want to remind you that again, this came from the plebs live stream. And, and if you guys don't subscribe to the pleb, if you don't watch the pleb, head over, show them some love, tell them the fringe sent you and um, check out his entire live stream. I won't be able to show tons of footage because well let's be honest i don't want to take away from what pleb did i thought that his stream was fantastic but i wanted to highlight some of what came in because people hear about these protests and people say ah that's it's just another it's not going to be a big deal it's not going to be anything massive this is a protest that is growing in momentum across the country you've seen the farmer protests in europe you've seen uh, truck drivers, or I, I guess, uh, tractors spraying manure all over government buildings in places like France. I'm not sure if we're going to see that magnitude of protests here in Canada, but it's great to see the farmers finally jumping on board and showing the government that, hey, we are the ones in charge of the food supply. We make the rules around here, Justin Trudeau, not you. Uh, let's take a look at the I'm not going to have audio simply because I don't want to take away from the work that the pleb did. Uh, but look, this is this is just the crowd at the beginning. These are as the tractors are pulling into this parking lot in Montreal. I'm not sure where exactly in Montreal this was. If, uh, if anybody knows, again, leave a comment down below. But here they come moving in. I expected, in all honesty, for this line of tractors to maybe take a few minutes to come in that it was going to start small and then maybe grow over time. But boy, was my mind blown again to see such commitment from Canadian farmers. This was akin to during the freedom convoy. When I heard about the convoy starting up, when I heard about the rally getting started, uh, I remember when they drove through Calgary, there was a truck stop that had a lot of the truckers from out west meeting up to link up before moving on their way to Ottawa. And I kind of looked at the news footage and said, well, it is a large group, but it's something that's probably going to fizzle out. You might have truckers who start to turn around and say, I, I can't do this. I got a living to worry about. But lo and behold, by the time they reached Manitoba, 
I remember turning on the news and seeing the trucks blast through a town called Headingley, which is just outside of Winnipeg, as the trucks made their way and continued on their way to Ottawa. This is that moment for the for the farmers where you get that feeling of this is what Canada is. This is what Canada is becoming. People are standing up and people have had enough. Enough of the taxing, enough of unaffordability, enough of not being able to make a living. Because let's be honest, Pierre Polyev has said many times, these are the farmers who bring your food, who then give it to the truck drivers, who ship it onto the stores, who pass that onto the consumer. If it becomes unattainable to do it, if, it's, if farmers can't afford to farm, the food supply drowns out. And again, you have the government coming and saying, just like the kids' school lunch program, oh, don't worry, we'll take care of you. You'll eat the bugs and you'll like it. You'll own nothing and you'll be happy. But just look at this long line of tractors. Now, I've put together roughly an eight-minute compilation. I won't show the whole thing. Again, if you didn't catch the plebs live stream, go and watch it. Go check it out. The crowds do nothing but grow here. And again, people will say, well, Derek, these are just a couple of tractors. Well, no, let's pouring in. Look at over here to the left. They just keep coming in. Like I'm skipping ahead about 25 seconds at a time. They just keep coming and coming, coming. They got their signs on top of their, uh, on top of their vehicle. It's piling in estimate i'd say there was well over 200 tractors in this specific parking lot again uh we're going to show other footage from across canada i'm not sure if there is a plan again to meet up to, to mobilize to do something similar to the freedom convoy or maybe descend upon ottawa it's it's questionable right now and again i don't want to seem like like i'm promoting overthrowing the government or anything i don't want to have my bank account frozen but look at the trucks like they just keep more and more. Now I'm going to show you the aftermath of every again. Like <laughs> every time I'm moving forward, it just doesn't end, ladies and gentlemen. Again, this is where I'm saying this could be something. This could be the start of something akin to the Freedom Convoy. Again, I don't think we'll ever see anything on the scale that we've seen with the Freedom Convoy for the main reasons that I think the government is more prepared now for this kind of an uprising. And it's going to be very interesting to see how this works. Now, I do have a video coming up very soon about Justin Trudeau actually amending the Emergencies Act. And it's very scary as to what's going on. There's the pleb jumping. Very scary to think about what could happen to Canadian farmers, Canadian protesters moving forward. Make sure to check back on the channel for that video coming very soon. But again, it was supposed to come later today, but I wanted to get this video out first. I wanted to make sure you guys caught this because, man, I was taken back just to see the. They're still coming. Keep in mind, I have chopped this up in order to show you guys because there's only so much time to make a video. Look at them all coming in. They're still coming. We're getting towards the end of the line. Crowds starting to form. You can see them all in the back here. Now take a look. Here's the crowds. And then the pleb turns around to show you just how many tractors are sitting in this one parking lot getting ready. I'm not sure again where they're moving or if they're staying in this parking lot. But look at the tractors sitting out here. Making their, making their voices heard, making sure that the government knows we're not going anywhere. We're fed up. Enough is enough. It's not just this one side to the right either because the pleb moves over to the left here. You can see this parking lot is full of tractors. It's completely full. I'm not sure how this Walmart feels or the Toys R Us, but uh, completely bombarded by tractors. Look at them all. Of course, they had speeches going on. I want to go back really quick. Clip see over here like like rows of tractors even to the right here more tractors as walking once said how oh, i got a fever and the only prescription is more tractors <laughs> and that's that's a terrible walking i apologize how <laughs> oh, okay speeches 
uh, as well as, I mean, again, the crowd that turned out in support of this, look at them all. Again, you've got their signs, you've got uh, people ready to listen. People have had enough. The people in Montreal are fed up. Canadians are fed up. This extra hike on the carbon tax, people just I wanted to show this other clip. Again, man, a lot of content from the pleb today. Um, he shows here, and this is where, again, I think this could surmount, this could grow, that we, we've shown on other videos, Canadian farmers in Alberta are out protesting Justin Trudeau's carbon tax. Now, while you're not seeing as many tractors as you're seeing uh, in, in the previous clip, this again, I don't, I'm not sure where this was taken, if it was just these guys getting ready to move, but, but if farmers are going to move across the country, if we're going to see a farmer uprising, what is the government going to do? What is going to happen here? This is out of this world. Here we go. More. More in Alberta starting to move. The farmers are fed up. Again, they control the food supply. Now, we've seen premiers across the country petitioning to sit down, to petitioning to hear from Justin Trudeau about what is going to happen with this carbon tax because Canadians can't afford to live anymore. Canadians are lining up in record numbers at food banks. Wait, let's, let's hear what Pierre Polyev has to say. As Pierre puts him in, in his place asking for a televised conference with the premiers. This prime minister is not worth the cost. Indeed, his carbon tax, which the parliamentary budget officer has proven, costs 60% of Canadians more than they get back in rebates, is now opposed by 70% of Canadians. Everybody understands that the tax is driving people to the food bank. That's why six premiers, including the Liberal Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, have asked for a meeting. Will he agree to a televised carbon tax conference if he's so sure of himself on this issue? Uh, what would be also helpful is if we were able to deliver the doubling of the rural top-up to put hundreds of dollars in the pockets of Canadians, but the Conservative oh. Party is blocking the legislation oh. to double the rural top-up. That is mathematically impossible that given that the NDP Liberal government has a combined majority and can pass That's anything right. it wants, which is exactly why we're in such a mess today yeah. as a country. After eight years, this NDP Liberal Prime Minister is not worth the cost, and that's why the Parliamentary Budget Officer confirms 60% of Canadians are paying more in carbon taxes than getting back in rebates. But why doesn't the Prime Minister, if he believes the contrary, why doesn't he have the courage to sit down in a televised and open forum and have a carbon tax conference with the premiers. We all know the answer to that. It's because Justin Trudeau knows that his carbon tax is nothing more than a tax scam. He knows that if he were to sit and try to debate this with any of the premiers, especially the likes of Danielle Smith or Scott Moe, it would be over in seconds. The argument is invalid, especially when you see provinces like Alberta that are investing in hydrogen fuel, that are investing in different methods of clean capture in order to ensure that our carbon footprint, while the most minimal in the, in the world, is kept within the bounds of reality as to, as to how we can maintain a cleaner country. Alberta has some of the cleanest and safest practices in the world. In fact, I believe they do have the cleanest and safest practices in the world. Justin Trudeau, if he really wants to preach about the environment, if he, re if he really cared about the environment, if Stephen Guibault actually cared about the environment, they would be shouting from the rooftops that mass pollutant countries like India, China, all need to get on board. They need to use this technology. They need to adopt this technology. When you look at the Paris Accords, why aren't they showing them what Alberta is doing in order to maintain its clean energy production and say this is what the rest of the world needs to do? Because the reality, folks, is that we need oil and gas. It ain't going anywhere anytime soon. And as soon as something reliable, something feasible, 
becomes available, I am more than happy to back off and say, hey, maybe we should try that if it's better for us, if it's cleaner, if we don't need to frack anymore. Those would all be wonderful things. But the sad reality is it's a similar to telling cowboys back in the Wild West that horses were bad and they can't use them for travel. It, it was a necessary means of getting around and living. Uh, let me know what your guys' comments are, but down below, let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think Justin Trudeau should do a televised conference? I mean, I'd be getting the popcorn for that one. I think it would be great. Uh, let me know what you think about the farmer protest. Again, head over to the pleb, show him some love, subscribe to his channel if you haven't yet. Uh, check out the entire live stream because even though we showed a very substantial amount of clips here from that live stream, I can tell you right now that the video just doesn't do it justice. I think that this is the beginning of a revolution, and I think that people's voices are only going to get louder as the protests continue. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if it's your first time here, I hope this video has earned your subscription. Make sure to join us this Friday on the channel at 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central for Friday Night Fringe, where we're going to definitely go over this, as well as other things going on in the country, and we're going to have some back and forth with the community. I enjoy hearing from you guys outside of making these videos, and I look forward to seeing each and every one of you there, and I hope you enjoyed this video and have a great rest of your day. I know I will. I'll catch you on the next one.